Hey there guys, hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to take on a diabetes insipidus. See, diabetes insipidus is a disease which is characterized by polyuria, polydipsia and increase in the serum osmolarity. Okay. So we have three things in the disease we have polyuria we have polydipsia and we have increased in the serum osmolarity so look uh, to make the video very simple and easy to understand i have divided the video into two parts like i usually do in the first part we'll look at the basic physiology like uh, what is the normal physiology or under the normal condition how does the uh, things take place and in the second part of the video, I look at the disease or the pathology of the disease like uh, what is different in case of diabetes insipidus, like what is there which is making the disease which was not present usually. Okay, so hang in there till I teach you the physiology and the pathology part. Okay, so let's take on the physiology first. All of us know the nephron. See, you, you might have known the nephron uh, and you have also studied the nephron in the physiology part. See, the nephron consists of the Bowman's capsule, it consists of the proximal tubule, it consists of the loop of henel, the descending part of loop of henel and the ascending part. This is the descending part and this is the ascending part. Okay. Then it consists of the distal convoluted tubule. See, this is the distal convoluted tubule which I am drawing, and then we have the collecting duct. Okay, then we have the collecting duct. So uh, we will focus on these parts of the nephron. That is the late part of the distal tubule and the collecting duct. Okay, so I am magnifying this part. See, in the collecting tubule. Okay, so in the collecting tubule part, see, this is the lumen from where the urine will flow and this is the wall of the collecting tubule okay so in the collecting tubule we have some specific kind of cells okay so i am drawing out these cells in the collecting tubule okay in the collecting tubule we have some specific kind of cells these are called as the principal cells okay pc that is principal cells like this is the principal cell, this is the principal cell, this is the principal cell and this is the principal cell. So in the collecting tubule, we have the principal cells. Okay, now why are these principal cells so important? Because if I magnify these cells now, this is the cell. Okay, this cell has actually got some specific kind of receptors. Okay, so on the this is look this is the basal side this is the basal side and this is the apical side okay so on the basal side we have some specific kind of receptors which are called as the v2 receptors okay which are called as the v2 receptors now these receptors are responsive to adh okay so these re receptors are responsive to adh See what happens is that when the ADH comes and binds with these V2 receptors, there occurs a specific change in the apical side. Okay, on this side there will occur a specific change, and what happens over there is that on this apical side there is an insertion. Okay, there is an insertion of specific kind of channels which are called as the Aquaporins, you might have heard this name aquaporins earlier. Okay, so these are the aquaporins and these are inserted on the apical side when when the ADH comes. Okay, so this is the normal physiology. What happens is that in the collecting tubule, there are specific kind of cells which are called as the principal cells. These principal cells have got an apical side and these have got a basal side on the basal side we have a receptor which is called as the v2 receptor which is responsive to adh when the adh comes and binds with these v2 receptors 
there occurs an insertion of specific kind of channel which is called as the aquaporin and as a result of the insertion of the aquaporin the water which is flowing from the lumen will now enter the channel aquaporin and via the channel it will be absorbed into the blood so this is the normal physiology yeah under the influence of adh there occurs the insertion of aquaporins into the uh, apical side into the basal side of the principal cells of the collecting tubule and as a result of which there occurs the absorption of the water from these channels and the water is absorbed into the blood stream okay so water is absorbed into the blood so this is the normal physiology and here we complete the first part of our video now i will come to the second part of video that is how does the disease takes place that is how does diabetes insipidus occur okay so hang in there till i cover the second part so now what happens is that in case of diabetes insipidus there are actually two variants of the disease okay so one is the central diabetes insipidus or the cranial diabetes insipidus what they call it and one is the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so in case of central diabetes insipidus there is a decreased production of adh okay so there is a decreased production of adh look now will you now it will start making sense what happens is that since there is a decreased production of adh so there therefore there would be decreased number of aquaporins yes or no yes so there would be decreased number of aquaporins and as a result of this there would be decreased reabsorption of water yes or no yes so there would be decreased reabsorption of water since there would be decreased reabsorption of water what will what will take place there would occur polyuria yes or no like will pass less or more amount of urine yes will pass more amount of urine because we are absorbing less of water so there will occur polyuria okay since there will occur polyuria to compensate the polyuria normal person will drink more amount of water or less yeah more so there will occur polydipsia okay since there is occurring polyuria more of water is being lost in the urine so in the blood the osmolarity will increase or decrease yes the osmolarity will increase therefore there will occur the hyper osmolarity there will occur the hyper osmolarity in the serum so serum will turn out to be hyper osmolar so this is the major pathology of the central part of the diabetes insipidus see again i'll repeat in the central diabetes insipidus the actual pathology is that there is a decrease in the adh secretion since there is a decrease in the adh secretion it will lead to decreased number of aquaporins in the principal cells of the collecting tubule since there would be decreased number of aquaporins it will lead to decreased reabsorption of water from the collecting tubule since there would be decreased reabsorption of water into the blood the more of water will be lost in the urine which will cause the polyuria since there will occur polyuria the normal person will drink more amount of water to compensate the polyuria leading to polydipsia and also since more of water is being lost in the urine the serum would turn hyper osmolar okay so there would occur the hyper osmolarity in the serum so this is the basic pathology of the central part of the diabetes insipidus or the central diabetes insipidus okay no uh, we will uh, will look on the causes like uh, what what causes the central diabetes insipidus okay so so look uh, uh, as i told you in the central diabetes insipidus there is a decreased secretion of the adh so the causes of central diabetes insipidus may lie either in the hypothalamus because if you review or if you try to recon from your Uh, like physio classes 
uh, the uh, the ADH hormone is actually synthesized in the hypothalamus, but it is stored and secreted in the pituitary gland. Okay, so the cause may lie in the hypothalamus or the cause may lie in the pit, uh, pituitary gland. Okay, so here is the uh, hypothalamus and here is the pituitary gland. So the causes of hypothalamus will uh, the central lipase inhibitors may lie in the hypothalamus or they may lie in the pituitary gland as a result of which there is a decreased secretion of ADH and uh, as a result of which there is polyuria there is polydipsia and there is serum hypervascularity so now if i ask you like uh, what would, what would we uh, like uh, we can do to what uh, we can do to uh, correct the central lipase inhibitors okay so the answer is like very simple yeah we can give adh analogs so we can give adh analogs if we try to give the adh analogs the central lipase inhibitors will improve okay so the adh analog which we give to treat the central lipase inhibitors is called as desmopressin so it is called as desmopressin so what is the treatment of central lipase inhibitors it is the desmopressin so uh, this is the first part that is the central part of the lipase inhibitors now the second second type of lipase inhibitors is the nephrogenic lipase inhibitors okay now i will take on the nephrogenic lipase inhibitors see what happens in case of the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors? See, in case of the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors, so in case of nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors, the ADH is normal. Okay, the ADH is normal, like ADH is secreted in normal amounts, but what happens is that the principal cells of the kidney, okay. So the principal cells of the kidney they are unresponsive to ADH. Okay, now the ADH will come, but the ADH will not be able to bind to the receptors and cause the insertion of aquaporins. No, the the kidney and the cells are unresponsive. They are totally unresponsive to, to the ADH. Okay, so that is what is happening in the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors. If, if we look at the causes of the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors, the causes of the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors are like it may be due to drugs like lithium. Or it, one drug is very common which is causing the nephro, nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors. It is demyclocycline and antibiotic demyclocycline. Okay. So this these two drugs that is the lithium and demyclocycline they are responsible for the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors see the clinical features of nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors are almost same as that of central diabetes inhibitors that is we have polyuria okay so we have polyuria we have polydipsia okay we have polyuria we have polydipsia and also we have increased serum osmolarity but what differentiates the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors from the central diabetes inhibitors is that see uh, we were able to treat the central diabetes inhibitors by giving desmopressin but the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors cannot be treated see it cannot be treated by ADH analog okay so we cannot treat ADH analog uh, Treat the nephrogenic diabetes inhibitors by giving ADH analog because actually the ADH is not able to bind. So we cannot give ADH analog in this case. So in this case, we we'll treat it by giving a special kind of diuretic which is called as thiazide diuretics. Okay. So I'm not going into the treatment part in much detail like why to give the thiazide diuretic, why not to give ADH analog. I'm just giving a superficial review of the treatment. But what my motto is to make you understand like what is diabetes inhibitors, what are the clinical features which are associated with diabetes inhibitors and like what are the two types of diabetes inhibitors. Okay, I hope I have made this video uh, simple so that you can understand. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and those people who have watched the video till end, 
yeah this is my first video on this like uh, this white screen and using the pen i'll improve the videos as i go further thank you